So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Okay, and then we'll start physics one. So, and I'll start it just from the most basic stuff. So vectors. And everything's going to be fair. I would rather, this is actually more beneficial for you when you go through this. It's not about the formulas. The formulas are pretty minimal. The level of physics is pretty minimal. It's just more that you can think about it. So we're not just going to crunch the equations. All the more difficult problems, they give you passage. I don't know what the hell they're saying, but I can pick out basic themes. But those basic themes, you have to have like the back of your hand. And the framing, the way you think about those basic themes, that should, I mean, that should be in line with the test. So that's kind of the goal here. Okay? So you remember the old startup, right? If you have length, time, mass, what are my standard units for that? Length is in meters. meters. Time is in seconds. seconds. And mass is in kilograms. kilograms. Okay, so super easy, super mellow. Then I want to start with a vector. So let's start with this. So remind me, what is a vector? And remember, the way it's going to be is literally everything is just what we do in class. So you don't need any other outside knowledge. So a vector is something with magnitude and direction? Yeah, it's got a length, a magnitude, and it's got a direction. So it's like a push. That's what I'm really trying to model. I'm trying to model a push. So you care how hard I push you, and you care which way I push you. You don't actually care if I push you here or at the back of the room. It's still a push. Do you guys agree? So this guy is actually the same, if I could draw it right. I probably can't draw it right, as this guy. These are exactly the same vectors. As long as they have the same magnitude, same length, and they've got the same direction, they're the same push. Right? So super mellow, super easy on this. Okay. Then if I have vectors, again, we'll go through this very quickly in the beginning, kind of like we do with chem, and then we'll slow down as it gets harder. I've got to have operations on them. So the first one I want to look at is addition. Do you guys remember how addition works? So like if I had a vector here named like x, and I have a vector here like y, how do you add x and y? That's so sophisticated. How do, you, how do you do this like gimpy fashion? Yeah, you just walk along one first, then you walk along the other. So this is literally how I add vectors. But that makes sense. I push you this way first, then I push you that way. From where you start to where you end up, that's always a sum vector. Okay? That's really how we're going to add vectors. I push you once this way, then I push you that way. Always from where you start to where you end up. That's our sum. And being totally fair, how come I can move this y over to here? Why is that OK? It's the same guy. It's got the same direction. It's got the same magnitude, right? So it's definitely the same guy. So everything is fair, except for chalk rag. OK, so that's not so bad. So again, super easy, super mellow, right? OK, then I want to expand this. So if I have addition, maybe I want multiplication. So can you help me out with the multiplication? We don't ever in this class do real multiplication of vectors. That's too much. We'll do this nice mellow version. So I've got a vector x here, right? And then you tell me, what do you think 2x would look like? Twice Yeah, it'd be like twice as long, but in the same direction. Do you guys agree? Again, super easy, super mellow. What would be like half of x? What would you picture that to be? Same direction, but literally half the length. That's it. The only tricky thing that comes up here is, what would I do with a negative? Like, what would negative x be? It'd be same magnitude this time, but opposite direction. Okay. There are a couple reasons we want to do this. Number one is, it makes a whole lot of sense. You're used to this. If right is positive, then left should be what? Negative. Does everybody agree? It also makes sense because arithmetic should work. So what I mean by that is, if you take x, and these were numbers, these are not numbers, they're vectors, but if they were numbers, what should happen? x plus negative x should be what? Zero. Zero. So I ha for this to work, I have to define it that way. Because that means if x is like this, right, and the negative x happens to be what? This way, by definition, what happens when I sum them? First you walk along this guy, then you walk along that guy. It's always from where you start to where you end up, which is the same point. So that sum vector is really what? Zero. Zero. So one, it's very natural, and two, it's, it's got to be that way if arithmetic's going to work out. Okay? So that's not so bad either. Everybody agree? Okay. Then let's do a little bit of baby critical thinking. What if I did something like subtraction? So we're going to cheat. For subtraction, I'm going to say something like this. Pretend arithmetic works. If you assume arithmetic works, 
how would you take care of a vector like vector x and vector y, and I wanted x minus y? If you knew the arithmetic worked, what would happen? Like, I don't know how to subtract, but I definitely know how to what? How to add. So I could write this as what? x plus negative, negative y. Okay? I could totally do this. Everybody agree? Okay. So what does this guy become? Tell me how to work this out. I have my x doing his thing, and then how do I add negative y? I take y and just reverse the direction. Sounds really good. So I could first write them out like this to see negative y. But you know what you do? You walk along one, and then you walk along the other. Shouldn't put more room. And how do you work the sum? It's always from where you start to where you end up. So this would be the difference. You walk along one, you walk along the other. The only difference is he's a negative now, so you flipped his direction. Okay. So is everybody okay with this? They can actually test this conceptually. They don't ever make you really draw the arrows, but they can test this conceptually. Okay? Let me take this away. That's kind of clouding the scene, making it a little hard to see. So it should be something like that. Okay. So do you want to do something with this? Let's try something with this. I mean, this is even a demo I do on YouTube, but we should do it. So the worst it would get to get a feel for the level of problems on the exam, it would be something. This is the worst it would get with vector addition, not a joke. I have, I don't know, someone picked their favorite number. Five. Five. I have a force of five newtons. Someone picked their <laughs> a second favorite number. Eight. <laughs> eight. Let's go eight. Okay. I have two forces, one of 5 newtons and one of 8 newtons, and I'll say which of the following could not be the magnitude of the sum of these two vectors, okay? And I'll put as the answer choices something like 2, 3, I don't know, uh, 9, and then 12. So you tell me, how do you do that? So the question is again, you have one force of 5 newtons, one of 8, which of the following could not, so that's the operative word, be the magnitude of the sum of those two vectors based only on what we were doing. You don't need any outside physics, anything like that. And remember, every problem that, we, that you see on the exam can be done in about a minute or less. So if you're doing something that's taking like two, three, four minutes, it's too much. That's also the biggest problem come in the sciences, right? You are too smart for the exam. So someone help me out. What do you guys think? Sounds good. Everybody agree with that? Think that? Like, what numbers, what number do you think loses or wins here? Two. Especially people that haven't seen this. What do you guys think on this aisle? Two? Three, Josh. Josh, what do you think? I, I was thinking two also. You're thinking two? People think two? Everybody should think on their own, because sometimes the class as a whole is right, sometimes it's not. Sue, what do you think? Sue number one. You, Sue. Yeah, there's a visiting Sue. Okay, so you got a guy with five newtons, you got a guy with eight newtons, right? And I'm saying, you sum them together, what could, which of the following could not be the magnitude of the sum? If you have a force of five newtons and eight newtons, which of the following could not be the magnitude of the sum of those two forces? Josh, what do you think? I know you kind of have an advantage on this, but... Two, maybe? Okay. What do you think? Sue number two, what do you think? Two. So, what's the easiest way to do this problem? Because they're never going to do this. Well, it's important, especially if it's the first time for you to see a problem like this and you're thinking this way, you could totally uber geek it out. You could pick a vector like this. You could pick some other vector off like this. It doesn't matter, right? You could try to get through this and get some angle between them, but that's impossible because you don't know what the angles are. I mean, for all you know, this guy could be going down like this. You have no idea. Does everybody agree? So, it can't be a game like that. So it's always this level of thinking. The best you could possibly do is if I push with the five, you push with the eight, and we work together. That's just the very best we could do, right? The worst we could do is I push with the five, you push with an eight, you overpower me, but how much do you beat me by? Three, I mean, the sign doesn't make a difference. I'm pushing one way, you're pushing the other, you win by three. So what's the biggest value you can have? 13, and the smallest you could have is what? Three. So. Obviously, that's borderline, but it's okay, okay, okay. This is the one that wins, okay? This is always the level of the test, okay? That's not too bad, right? Okay, so let's push this up a little bit more. So I got the whole vector thing going on, but you obviously know on the exam, 
And just in real life, you're not gonna draw arrows all day. That just takes too much time. So what I wanna do is look at components. And start to see if I can do the component game. So let's do this again. Same thing, same addition, nothing's different. I just wanna do some pieces. I already know that you could take this guy, add y over here, let's erase him. I also know I could take the sum vector from where you start to where you end up. I guess we can try to use color. So is everybody okay with this? But since this is a complicated problem with arrows and you can't draw arrows all day, all day it might be advantageous to break it up into easy pieces. So what's the easy way to do this? Break this up into left and right and what? Up and down. Up and down. But let's see if that actually works. So first let's check. So let's look at this guy. This first guy brings you, can we just call it like, I don't know, X1 or something? So he brings you over this amount to the left. Do you guys agree? In fact, I know in the past this confuses people. Can I change the letters? Let's change the letters, just because I don't want people to get confused. So let's confuse, make this A and make this B, okay? And let's write like this. So this is A1. So he brings you over this much from left to right. What about B? What does he do for you? Some other amount. Let's call it B1 from left to right. You don't have to write all the letters down. That's not important. The point is, this guy moves you over this much to the right. This guy moves you over that much to the right. Is it true that the total guy moves you the sum of those from left to right? Yeah, you could totally see that. Do you guys agree? So combined, that gives you the total movement from left to right. Let's call that x. Okay, no big deal. What about in the vertical direction? So I do blue here. Does it work vertically as well? So we can check. So if you do this, this guy lifts you up, say, this amount. Let's call that like A2. This guy lifts you up how much? Zero. Zero keeps you level. But does everybody agree the total push-up is really A2 plus B2, which would have been zero? So that these guys sum to give you the total lift up. So I think this is believable, right? You could totally see it for yourselves. You, instead of doing this whole thing at once, you can break it up into left and right for the first guy, left and right for the second guy, put them together. Up and down for the first guy, up and down for the second guy, and you just put them together. Okay? Totally it. So I believe it. So I think concepts first. I think we can use components, because that'll make life a lot easier. So we'll always do that. Look at left and right, look at up and down. Then I gotta be able to do a little bit of math. So let's say this is like 10 meters per second, and let's say this is an angle of 30 degrees. So 30 degrees means nothing. In fact, let me just put theta. Okay. Can you tell me? I want to play the same game. I want to break this up into a left and right. So it's something like that. So if I want this x coordinate, how do I get it? Help me out. 10 cos. So first, I heard this. Let's start with this guess. 10 cosine theta. 10 cosine theta. But let's try that out. First, do you agree what is cosine? I'm gonna, so adjacent, but let's just write it out because I don't believe this yet. Okay, so adjacent, which in this case is what your x coordinate over the hypotenuse, which is what ten. So all you're really doing is you're taking adjacent over hypotenuse and you're multiplying by the hypotenuse. So all you're really doing is killing that stupid ten. So what do you end up getting? X. That's exactly what you wanted. So it really is ten cosine theta. Let's test again. Let's try it with the y's. Let me put it in a different color. So how about for this guy? What's going on here? If you want y, ten what do you think y? Ten, ten sine, sine theta? Sine so I hear it's ten sine theta. Can, we, can you check that for me really quickly? Sine is what? Off in this angle. Yeah, opposite over hypotenuse. And all you're doing is multiplying by the hypotenuse. So what ends up, ends up happening? Yeah, the tens kill each other. So you get exactly what you wanted. You get the y, okay? That's not too bad. We're not going to do everything at this pace, but in the beginning, it's, this is important, so we should get comfortable with this. Do you guys agree? So very mellow. So whenever you're looking at something like this, if you're looking at the guy that's opposite, it should be 10 sine theta, because sine is opposite. We'll think of that. So that would be our y. What if you want the guy that's adjacent? Adjacent goes with cosine, cosine theta, and you always want to kill that hypotenuse. So this general pattern, I want to have down, like the back of my hand. Right, so never want to ever think about this. It should be easy. Or if it's been a while, once you practice it, it should be like the back of your hand. So is it very stressful or no? That's not stressful so far. It's mellow, right? Okay, now let's do some actual work because that's just a formula. So 
What's more important than this stupid thing is you have some feel for this. You have some intuition when you're doing problems. And since you have to memorize a bunch of CRUD anyway, the less you memorize, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so let's just do this. 